back to the phones we go. You're on The Conspiracy Show. Hello, welcome. I also wanted to ask about the number 666. I uh, heard... When this, when this true being comes, who declares himself as the world teacher, he'll be the most amazing, angelic-looking being the world has ever seen. You know, I went to the... Broadcast. major conspiracy, and it all ties together based on something that happened a really, really long time ago, and that all conspiracy... This world teacher will come at a time of great, you know, economic chaos, social collapse, uh, war, like when Israel will attack Iran. All right, thanks for the call. Welcome to The Conspiracy Show. My name is Richard Serrett. Do the Holy Scriptures, the Old and New Testament of the Bible, really tell us that an Antichrist will rise to world power, culminating in a final battle between good and evil? If the Antichrist is real, where is he? Who is he? Tonight, we'll meet end times prophecy experts who affirm the existence of a final Antichrist, each with their own ideas as to his identity. We'll also hear from another biblical researcher who affirms that there is absolutely no scriptural basis for an antichrist, or an end times for that matter. Take these things out of the first century to whom they were written and, and, and how it was meant. It's no wonder uh, people look at the Bible as though some kind of a fairy tale. Our mission is to investigate these claims and follow the truth wherever it may lead. It is time to redefine reality. Genetic enigma, the human alien hybrid. Ali Siadatan is with us, documentary filmmaker, writer, director of UFOs, Angels, and Gods. Ali has been researching the Bible since 1991, specializing in biblical prophecy. Ali, welcome to the Conspiracy Show. Thank you for having me, Richard. Where did the idea of an antichrist come from? Well, there's an actual passage, two passages in the letters of John, in the epistles of John, that mention the word antichrist. That, that's where the word comes from. The concept is throughout scripture. But let me just start by repeating from the Bible the passages where the word appears. Um, it says, who is a liar? but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, which is the Greek word for the Messiah. He is Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. So the idea is that the denial of the deity of Christ, this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. I published a book called June 6, 2006, Antichrist Revealed, and on that day around the world, I revealed to the world the name and identity of the Antichrist. In studying scripture and, and world events, do you have any further clues as to the identity of the Antichrist? Is this individual a, a public figure that we would know and recognize? The Antichrist does not come as a politician in a three-piece suit. He comes as a spiritual person. He comes as, a, as the savior of all religions, faiths, and creeds, and he's called the beast. And I believe he's called the beast because he'll be a human clone, and he lacks a conscience, so he's really a psychopathic killer. I see him as being between seven foot tall and seven foot six, about 425 pounds, perfectly built, the most beautiful being the world has ever seen. And it's by his beauty alone that he would captivate the world. You know, when you look like that, you don't have to talk much. Where is he going to come from? How will he make his presence known on this planet? Well, we have, we have clues given to us that we can follow. Um, it seems that in his hand, uh, there will be political, religious, military, and economic rule. He seems to be the leader of a coalition of 10 nations. He's here on the earth now, but what, what state he's in is hard to say. He, if he is a human clone, which I believe, he could be in some type of oxygen chamber now asleep, and they'll awaken him after this first rapture event, and they'll summon, they'll, they'll awaken him, and the, it'll be his time. 
It also says the beast will have all be given all the power of the devil, and he'll be able to perform all signs, wonders, and miracles. So let's say he could be able to levitate an elephant, or he'll be able to levitate himself to the top of the United Nations, you know, building. He could have even levitate a person that challenges him. There's no such thing as the Antichrist uh, because that's coming from a futurist uh, eschatology. Uh, many people believe today we're living in the last days, and uh, no, we're not. We've been out of the last days for almost 2,000 years. John Anderson is the author of Satan, an authorized autobiography. John, welcome to The Conspiracy Show. Thanks for joining us. Richard, it's great to be here. John, you contend there's no scriptural basis for an antichrist, but he specifically mentioned uh, throughout the Bible in uh, the epistle of uh, John and uh, Revelation, etc. No, there's no such thing as the antichrist. The Bible knows nothing about that. Uh, what it talks about, uh, John says in his day, there are many antichrists. And how do you know who they are? An Antichrist is one that denies that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. So that was what the Antichrist was in the first century. There were many of them, and there are those today that believe that Jesus Christ did not come in the flesh. John also writes that anyone who denies Christ is the Antichrist. It's promoting that the spirit. That could be me. That could be anyone. Well, yes. How does that point to an actual individual? by taking other passages into consideration. So you're right. The spirit of the Antichrist. Now, the Greek word actually is Antichristus. And Antichristus literally means pseudo-Christ, which means the replacement instead of Christ. So it's like, no, this is not the path. This is not the answer. This is. That, that's the spirit of the pseudo-Christ. So this spirit is in the world, but then it's embodied by humans. They who champion it, if you will. And the Bible's prophetic lens points to a champion of champions of this spirit and places him in the context of battles against Israel and against Jerusalem. It also says the beast will have all, be given all the power of the devil and he'll be able to perform all signs, wonders, and miracles. So let's say he could be able to levitate an elephant or he'll be able to levitate himself to the top of the United Nations, you know, building. He could have even levitate a person that challenges him. How do we know that the end times being described in Revelations and Daniel are actually projecting into the future? How do we know that the end times weren't some event like the destruction of the Second Temple right. in 70 AD? By examining the details of what is being said and comparing it to, well, reality, to history. Um, if you look at the Olivet Discourse, the discourse in which the destruction of the temple is mentioned by Jesus Christ, which is recorded in Matthew and Luke, uh, you often, you, you can clearly see a difference in those two discourses. One, I believe, is talking about the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. The other is talking about the destruction of the temple that the Antichrist will be in. Yes, that was the biblical last days, keep in mind. Uh, the book of Revelation was written before the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. It was not written after in 95, 97 AD, as many people believe. They have to elastitize it, but uh, God gave the revelation to Jesus Christ to give to John, to give to his fellows. These things must shortly come to pass. The time is at hand, not 2,000 years down the road. These were events that were happening in the first century. Well, there are more verses dedicated to the description of the great and terrible day of the Lord than any other topic in the whole of the Bible. And so these passages are not fulfilled in 70 AD. The details don't match what happened in 70 AD. They worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, who is able to make war with him? Who are the beast and dragon in Revelation? Okay, let's take a look at the word dragon for a moment. In Revelation 20, verse 2, it says, that old serpent, the devil, dragon, and Satan, it says those four words are synonymous or one and the same. Okay, let's take a look at how these words are used in the first century. In Matthew 23, Jesus said to the Pharisees, you serpents, you generation of vipers, 
if we go to Jeremiah 9 11, the prophecy was made that Jerusalem would become a den of dragons. Uh, when you look at 1 Peter 5 8, be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, goes about seeking whom he may devour. This is hyperbolic, metaphoric language describing living, breathing human beings, not some supernatural nonsense as so many people have been told. They will try to identify people and say, you know, this Obama is going to be the Antichrist and uh, uh, Kissinger is going to be the Antichrist. You can name all these people, but they don't qualify. They don't qualify because one, their name does not even decode to 666, which the Bible states it has to. here in historic Somerville, New Jersey, the home of End Times Press and author Nils Hamron. Nils has been studying biblical prophecy for over 50 years, and he has his own theory as to the identity of the final Antichrist. We're looking at somebody that is likely to be the Antichrist, and that person is gonna be somebody with extreme financial means and extreme political influence an extreme history. Somebody that has, let's say, a, a monarchy as their background. How will the false messiah, the Antichrist, make his presence here on Earth known? He will be leading a uh, extreme uh, remake of the European Union into a new entity which has only 10 countries. And when he comes, he, he, yeah, they will make him, they will, they will bow to him. He will take over the United Nations. But see, he's not coming to take over the world as people think in the beginning. He's coming as a very benign giant, a friendly giant to offer the world the plan of a devil. The name of this new entity is apparently going to be the Pan-European Union. And when we see the appearance of the Pan-European Union, we have then to watch who is leading this organization. And that very likely will be the Antichrist. He's waiting for a series of events to happen. War is going to explode in the Mideast against Israel because Israel, either in 2011 or 2012, they will hit Iran. They have to stop Iran's nuclear program. This red line represents World War III. When that occurs, the U.S. will be pretty much destroyed, and uh, we will have a, um, a military um, complete reversal. And the whole world's just going to seem to collapse in total chaos and anarchy. There'll be a light show in the sky, like a thousand UFO sightings everywhere. Maybe crop circles will appear, and it's in this setting of world chaos, a million people vanish, UFO sightings everywhere, that then he will make his appearance known to the world. China will become the dominant uh, nation. Russia will be destroyed by missiles from the U.S. The U.S. will be destroyed by scala wave weapons from Russia. <clears throat> you have two major military uh, forces that are now destroyed. And we get into uh, this uh, part here where they get a signature on this uh, d situation with the Mideast and get that straightened out. Then we go through the whole reign of the Antichrist, the final Antichrist, up to this red line. That red line is the Battle of Armageddon. The Christian world is looking for a Western politician in a three-piece suit, and this guy is gonna come as this massive, you know, Christ figure in a white robe with a rainbow, and he'll probably land, come in a spaceship. The false messiah is going to have to convince the people of this world, the people of all various religions, that he is the Messiah. How is he going to deceive all of these people? At the beginning, he is not trying to project himself as a Messiah. He's trying to project himself as an intelligent political figure. All five world, major world religions await the coming of a savior. One billion Catholics await the, quote, return of Christ. You have one billion Muslims in the world believe the Iman Mahdi will return, the 12th Iman, to bring world peace and bring Islamic law to the world. You have one million Hindus believe in the return of Krishna. 
You have the Jewish faith believes in the coming of the Messiah. One billion Buddhists await the coming of the Maitreya, the fifth Buddha of compassion. So he will claim to be this person, but just called by many different names. Do you know who he is? Yes, I know exactly who he is. If you knew what I knew, you would know that this person is the Antichrist, the future Antichrist. He's not an Antichrist now. And to, to meet him on the street, you would say that he's just a typical guy. And he is not possessed, he's not uh, doing anything harmful. He really may not even know he will become the Antichrist. And therefore, it's like a Salem witch hunt if you try to identify people and say, you know, this Obama is going to be the Antichrist and uh, uh, Kissinger is going to be the Antichrist. You can name all these people, but they don't qualify because one, their name does not even decode to 666, which the Bible states it has to. See, the book of Revelation actually tells us who he will be. It says, here is wisdom. Let he who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for his number is that of a man, and his number is 666. Now, when you look at that carefully as a mathematician, five million people on the earth have a name that decodes the 666. So you have five million people you can choose from. And he's going to use his Buddhic name of the coming fifth Buddha as his personal name. And the name, this ancient name of the coming Buddha is Maitreya. In the ancient Hebrew alphabet, every letter has a numerical value. And you could, you could theoretically spell the name Maitreya in Hebrew seven different ways. But every way you could spell, possibly spell his name, it calculates to 666. Doesn't the Antichrist have to convince all the major religions of the world that he is their Messiah? I'm not sure that's what's going to happen. I think that he's the leader, essentially, of his own religion. It's like a cult figure, right? Now, people from all around the world may buy into him. People from his immediate, you know, background and region may be completely behind him, and he may seduce individuals. But is he going to deceive every single religion and nation and person and all that stuff? I don't see that in the Bible. I see that his rule is a contentious one. And then he's going to miraculously rise from the dead. He may even attach his own head back on his shoulders and declare himself as God incarnate. There is a description of the Antichrist in Revelation where it is said he survives a seemingly mortal wound. Can you tell me about that? Somebody will be trying to kill him. Either someone will blow his head off with a high-powered rifle or maybe someone will, uh, you know, literally decapitate him with a sword or both. Three days later, after having that terrible wound, he gets up and starts walking around the street, making jokes and saying hello to people and, and, you know, acting normal. He may even attach his own head back on his shoulders and declare himself as God incarnate. And that will be the final miracle that, that seals the deal. That's a fairy tale. Number one, only God can raise someone from the dead. Take these things out of the first century to whom they were written and, and, and how it was meant. It's no wonder uh, people look at the Bible as though some kind of a fairy tale. What is life on earth going to be like during the tribulation? Paint me a picture. There are definitely many earthquakes and you can see the rise in earthquakes. It's going to be very much like life was in occupied countries uh, when uh, the SS troops were there. There was no regard for life. And to famine, and to wars, and to disease. There was almost nothing in the way of regard for anybody's life. A small child, a baby, um, their, their importance in the world is zero. Uh, the, the whole thing is like a complete breakdown of morals. However, I think it's unfair to paint a horrific picture, like, you know, God is sitting back and we're like in hell going, ah! you know, I think that it is a time where angels will be among us. Uh, but I think it's also a time of great deception. The beast will lead the world to worship Satan, and all who will not worship Satan will be killed. 
the beast will cause all to receive a mark upon their right hand and their forehead. The mark is a digital scannable tattoo. You'll just run your hand through the scanner at the supermarket and it'll automatically transfer money from your account to the bank's account, the World Bank, his bank. If you accept the mark of the beast, it is a, a terrible thing to do because you will lose uh, approval from God for your presence in the kingdom. In a way, it's like uh, committing suicide as far as the kingdom is concerned. So why has Christianity missed the boat in, I'm talking about the majority of Christianity, for all these years? It's because they don't study. They're lazy when it comes to the Bible. They say they believe, but they really don't study. They just want to know what the truth of the Bible is, and that requires study. 30 some years later, I'm still learning. So who is the final Antichrist? Will he be the head of a revived Roman Empire? Will he be an obscure spiritual leader working out of the offices of the United Nations? Or will he, as some believe, emerge from the Middle East? Perhaps the Antichrist and end times prophecy have multiple levels of meaning, serving as a series of warnings to humanity and also serving as an owner's manual, if you will, detailing the spiritual processes of our individual souls. And now we'd like to know what you think. You can contact us here at The Conspiracy Show through our website, www.theconspiracyshow.com. In the meantime, don't be afraid. Move over, Aphrodite. I'm coming home. Good night.